Welcome to Birdies and Bogies with Bazza. Bazza here, how are you doing? Right, just a quickie. I'm on my way up to staying in Lodge Swing Studio because they've got a golf demo day on. I'm going to... I've put it out there on Twitter that we think that there's need for a mid-handicap tester. Not a tester, not a reviewer. Just someone's perspective on products. Now, obviously, I, I'm small time. 360 subscribers on the channel. So I'm not going to... I have no power to shout to all these companies can I have this can I have that, that that's not going to happen if they come to if they the only way I'm going to get something is from people I know really um, hence the scenario this evening now I'm a member at the swing studio um, which runs alongside Staining Lodge in Staining near Blackpool um, I'm literally two minutes away from it as we speak I'm heading up there because they've got a Cobra demo day today they stock Cobra that is their main um, supplier of, of products now I've never really looked at Cobra never thought of getting Cobra I've got no reason to change I'm not looking to change anything that I've got whatsoever I'm just using this opportunity I'm basically I'm going to go and have a few swings with a few clubs so just get me, keep my me swing smooth, keep my swing going I'm playing golf for a couple of days on Saturday, Sunday this weekend up in Newcastle so there's no harm in me just coming up here and having a bit of a swing, keeping it going etc um, and while I'm at it maybe film a couple of vlogs on a couple of Cobra products right, we'll pull up here I don't know where to take my bag, should I take my bag? Is there any point taking my bag? No point taking my bag. staying in the lodge up at the swing studio be kindly invited up by and get everyone on Gavin Forsyth Tony Johnson and Andy I think it's her name Andy, yep. Andy from yep. Cobra Cobra's doing a fitting day basically down here a demo day should I say and Andy's very kindly said that he'll show me some of these what they're called S-Z's SZ, SZ, apparently that's what they're going to term it as because it's obviously made from the American market. So I'm going to hand, I've got my camera over there. He's got all the track man set up, look at that. Oh, it's very reading. It's nice bit of gear. So we're going to have a play and see what, uh, see what my opinion is of these new SZs. SZs. <laughs> With the with the Cobra launching it quite high, that can come as I'm coming out that, to it. Well, that could be, yeah, because you. I would like to say coming out to him, hitting down on it and spinning it, but his his spin is quite quite good. Right. Good numbers, really. The one I would want to play with is the launch angle with that, and right. I, I, 
Uh, there's only so much you can do with there's only so the, the there's only so much i can do because i've i've got you in a nine degree head there yeah you know yeah uh, it's got a great feel to it yeah i've got to admit it's got yeah. a great really good really well balanced feel to it and i always say you've hit that half a dozen times mm. you know you hit your one you've had it for a while and you've used oh, yeah, to it yeah. and play with it yeah. and the fig the figures are very similar. Well, this this dispersion is so yeah. much tighter. So as much, well, so much tighter. Like so I would say to you, uh, for fitting you, if you took that away and played with that for a season, then with the um, with the shaft on mine, because obviously, like I say, I was fitting for that one. I was a lot quicker than what. Does it? Have you got any pick up as to what my swing speed is? Yeah, yeah. Your average club head speed is uh, so. So you were av obviously you were getting a bit warmer. Yeah. So with yours, it was just over 100 mile an hour. With ours, it was 105. But that's nothing to do with the clubs. That's because you're warming, that's up. You're yeah, warming yeah. up. Yeah. So you were averaging 105 miles so, an hour. So I, I could off that then basically. I could I could say that my average swing speed at the moment is about 103 ish. Yeah. Yeah. Thereabouts. Yeah. yeah. It takes. Because you on the golf course, I'm assuming you wouldn't go at it 100. percent Well, no, well, I haven't been doing it no, at all. That, that, no. That's probably why back in the day, me me points were under and not you know, yeah. not score. But rather than you know, trying to get the handicap down now, I've, I've slowed it right down and trying to get a lot more accuracy. Yeah. Ones with the cobra. So that what's the it? biggest one of it there then? What's that? So, 240 odd. So we can go back in here. So that's this one. So it carried 246 and rolled out to 270. In winter. And and when well, this is based on PGA tour fairways. So would you say that do you think I'd benefit from a, a, a softer shaft now rather than No, I wouldn't, because you're quite aggressive from right. the top. You know, you you're still even though you're saying you've shortened your swing, which will probably increase your your, your transition because you're not as long, you're a bit shorter, so you'll get a bit even a bit quicker from right. the top. So no, I think with your swing speed that that's the shaft I'd probably be looking. Yeah. I might look at maybe something like a, a rogue silver and the extra stiff. The lower spinning, lower launching shaft for you. Uh, but yeah, in terms of flex and weight, I'd definitely definitely stay with it. Yeah. yeah. What, what was the shaft you just put in that one? That's the hazardous uh, smoke yellow. That's, so that's one of our stock shafts this year. Uh, so it's extra stiff, 70 gram. It's got a really good ride to roll that shaft, doesn't it? Yeah. And I mean, it's, as I say, as a stock option. It's, I mean, the head is designed around these shafts at the end of the day, the stock shafts. Uh, so they're, they're going to work together better. Is there much adjustability with those weight wise? If you're playing well and you're sentinus of strikes pretty consistent by moving the weight to the front or to the back it can change up to four four hundred yeah revolutions per minute so that's quite substantial if you're consistent if you're consistent with the strike, with the strike you know because if yeah. you're hitting it around the face it can it can be varied but if you hit it like me then basically you want to keep the weight at the back keep the spin rate down well yeah because your, your spin rate has, has been down you know it's uh but what's a good spin rate of a driver? Well, it's all to do with spin rate and launch angle, really, and you've got to mark, mark the two up. Yeah. So if you were launching it higher and you were, you were spinning it lower, then right, that's okay. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you know, if, and likewise, if you were spinning it higher and you're launching it lower, you know. So get some more coaching on me on my swing. On your swing? Try yeah. and get a bit more change inside. Change coming, your path a little down, bit. Get the yeah. path going out a bit more. Yeah. Than, uh, and then, yeah. and then obviously play about then with yeah and i probably i probably wouldn't i wouldn't rush into changing your driver when you're doing big swing changes like that anyway yeah, yeah. to be honest but uh just but you can see by the, the cobra there it's 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 worked pretty well for you to be honest it's a it's a it's a great tool it feels yeah it feels brilliant it feels brilliant and even i've hit some red here right off the heel here yeah and that's probably what we were talking about earlier. They're still right in there, aren't they? Yeah, you're, st you're still getting, because it's a bigger area, then we can be consistent, because it's all machine milled. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we've got the consistency across the, plate, the face, so every head that's, that is made, they're all exactly the same. I knew which one I ate from that one, though. Yeah, you, you, you can tell. When you get one yeah. out the middle, you know yeah. about it, don't yeah. you? Yeah. It really does go out there. But no, your figures, your figures are really good. 
Cheers. Uh, very good. I'll just get some more work on the uh, on yeah. the swing this year. And, yeah, uh, and these boys. Practicing. Yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah. Well, no, I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you very much. No worries. Nice Andy. No, no worries. Welcome to Buzz's Shed. Cobra King SZ. I'm calling it SZ, even though it was pronounced to me as being called the SZ. It don't roll off the tongue. I'm calling it SZ because that's how we talk over here. I'm not going to start giving you all the jargon because that's not what I'm about. I'm not going to tell you about the milled face. I'm not going to tell you about the carbon wraps. And I'm not going to tell you about the CGs and all that crap because, well, quite frankly, if it's that that you need details on, then I suggest that you go and watch Rick Shields, James Robinson, Mark Crossfield, etc, etc. They know what they're on about, I don't. I'm not going to pretend I know what I'm on about when it comes to that. I know enough from my point of view, and I'm sure you probably know what you need to know. At the end of the day, I'm just a golfer knocking up 45 year old that plays once every fortnight at the most. So what I'm trying to do here is basically offer my opinion to people that are in the same sort of scenario. Does that make any sense? Are you still here? Have you gone? Have you turned off? Well, if you're still here, thank you. Now, I've just gone up to a demo day there, up at Staining Lodge with Tony and Gavin and a chap called Andy, lovely guy. Thank you ever so much if you're watching this. Um, and I've just had a few shots with the Cobra SZ. It, it's a cracking driver. There's no, there's no getting away from it. It's, it's a cracking driver. Every driver on the market now is a cracking driver. There's no question about it. It's They're all on the limits. They're all right up there. They have been for a number of years now. They're all as good as it's going to get, in all fairness. They can't really get any better. That's why they're all kicking off about courses being too short, balls being too long. You know, they've taken technology right up to its very limit that it can't go any further it's not been able to go any further for a few years now they can tweak this and tweak that and tweak the other that's all they can do now so now we've reached a peak basically we we can't unless there's some significant changes made by the rna what can be done not a lot so all we can do basically is just look at what is on the market and what we can actually do with it or what we can achieve with it. Now, I've got a co uh, I haven't got a Cobra, I've got a Callaway Rogue um, Sub Zero with a Fujikura 72 gram shaft. So obviously, I had a few shots with that first, warming up a bit. <laughs> And it gave Andy a bit of an understanding as to where my swing was at. I'll be honest with you, my swing was terrible tonight. I'm not going to read all the jargon. I'm not going to read the infinity face, carbon wrap, low CG. I'm not going to, I'm going to fold that because I don't even want to see it. If you want to see that, head over there and have a look. So my club path. Minus 13.9. Minus 13. Point, talk about coming off at top. That's ridiculous. Face angle, minus 13.6. So basically, my face to path is 0 0.3. How am I getting that my face path to 0 0.3? Basically, what that means to the few that maybe don't understand it is that I'm managing to hit the ball quite square. 0.3 of a degree square when I'm coming right from over the top coming back in how on earth am I managing that I've got no idea I mean I can talk about spin rates I can talk about basically I was averaging about 103 mile an hour I think the biggest one tonight was about 105 I dare say after another 20 balls I could have probably got up to about 110 
108, 110 mile an hour after another 20 balls or so. Just walk, you know, just getting in. Couldn't spend too much time on it because obviously there's people up there getting wanting a demo and actually getting fitted to buy the products. Whereas I was just going up there for a bit of a play. I wanted this to use this as an opportunity to get my hands on another brand new latest on the market driver basically just so i could offer you my opinion on what it was now that's the goal of these blogs is basically just to offer the mid handicapper from a mid handicapper's perspective as to what i think of them now you can take from it absolutely whatever you want whether you could if you're still here on the channel i'm, I'll, I'm surprised but I understand as well, because I've been there. I've been looking for products. I've been looking for the driver. I've been looking for the the wedges. I've been looking for the putter. Um, the only opinions I can get on it these days are from the PGA pros that are striping them right now in the middle. The data, in all fairness, is... I'm not going to say it's irrelevant because it's not irrelevant. The data, the data is the facts. Um, what you read into that is what you will. Unfortunately, as mid handicappers, as once a fortnight players, once a month players, once a week players, um, we're not going to hit it right out of the middle every time. We're going to slice it. We're going to hook it. We're going to top it. We're going to sky it. We've all done it, and we'll keep doing it. The only thing that's going to get us good players is practicing. We are not going to be able to go out and buy a good round of golf. It's not possible. There's a lot of naivety out there. People, uh, and I've, I've been guilty of it. I've wanted the best of it, but realization kicks in. You know, an example. I could buy a driver for hundred quid. I could buy a driver for five hundred quid. Would there be a big difference? Yeah, there would be a big difference. There's no question, there would be a big difference. But one thing's for sure, that 500 pound driver, I could still hit that as bad as the driver for 100 quid. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit that expensive driver badly now and again, because I don't play enough, I don't practice enough, and I'm not good enough. I'm hoping to get better, but at the moment, that's where we are. There are people that can, want to, or are willing to, go out and spend on a brand new driver every time. Good for them. If that's what they want to do, good for them. They want the best, the newest, the, every credit. If you can do it, go and do it. Is it going to make that much of a difference? Is it going to make... Is it going to drop your two... You know... It's a fickle game is golf, I've found that out. It's a fickle game. As for the product... Let's let's just talk... Let, let, let's just... Let me just ramble on a bit about the Cobra SZ. It's a cracking driver. There's no question about it. Um, if I if I was if I had a few hundred quid to go out and spend on a brand new drive, I mean obviously at this present moment in time, I wouldn't do anyway because I've got a perfectly good driver in my bag. But if you you like Cobra, if you like the look of a driver that's got yellow bits, red bits, and black bits, and carbon bits, and this, that, and the other bits all over it. Every credit. Uh, it's, it's what appeals to you. If it's what you want, have it. It's. I've been in it a few shots with that SZ tonight, and I'm. I, I, I love the sound of it. It sounded so good. 
when you hit a ball with it, it sounded really good. So basically a recap, Cobra SZ driver, it's a good driver. That is my opinion. So basically, roundup, Baz's thoughts. Well, basically, I think I've shot myself well and truly in the foot with this new series because I've gone out there and I've got hold of one of the one of the best drivers on the market at this time. I know that whichever driver I put in my hand from whatever brand that is currently on the market that has been on the market in the last four or five years I could put any driver in my hand from the last four or five years and every single one of them is going to be a good driver they can't make them any better they've reached the peak this is the shortest series that you will probably ever know. So I'm gonna to have to come up with some ideas now as to what else I can do with the channel because this one clearly isn't gonna work. Tell me what your thoughts are. Do I take this channel any further? Do I take this series any further? Is it worth me chasing up with other brands as to finding an explanation as to what's good, what's bad, what's not. Basically, whatever it looks like, some people will like it, some people won't like it. Some people won't like the cost of some drivers. Some people don't mind the cost of some drivers because they can afford it. Who am I to judge? Who am I to tell you what's right and wrong? Nobody. Don't let anyone tell you any different. You do what you feel is comfortable. I think I'm going to go in and I'm going to get in front of the fire and I'm going to probably go on Twitter and tell everyone that this series is just an absolute waste of space because it, there's no point. Tell me what you think. Answer below. Give me some ideas. What do you want to see? Is there a product that you want my opinion on? That'd be a good idea. Is there a product on the market that you would like my opinion on? Let me know, please. I need something to do. Can't just play golf. Thank you for joining me. Best wishes. Happy golfing. <laughs>